Good morning, Francis, and thanks so much for joining us today and uh, for our first um, edition of the Member Community Spotlight Series. It's so great to have you here. Thank you, Jen. Uh, I appreciate you asking and look forward to the conversation. So Francis, you're a partner and head of the Houston office for FGS Global, which resulted from a merger with between RGH and Sard Verbenen earlier this year. Um, you also serve on the board of Stellar Bank Corp, who just went through a merger um, between Community Bank and Allegiance Bank Shares. So it has been a year of mergers for you. Um, and given the fact that there's probably going to be more mergers happening in the upcoming year, I'm wondering if there are any um, key takeaways or learnings um, that you uh, gained by going through this process that you could share. Well, thanks, Jen. That's you are correct. It has certainly been a year of mergers, and mergers certainly can be a distraction. Uh, there are lots of things to be done when you're bringing organizations together, but there are lots of opportunities, and that's what I like to look at when you talk about mergers. This neither of these two combinations are my first experience with mergers. And certainly on in my day job, that's what we counsel on. And we counsel on these types of transitions. And as an individual, you have to look at the opportunities that exist before you and why these combinations happen and what you can glean from that and how you can grab those opportunities. So I would advise anyone who is undergoing um, such a combination to look for those opportunities to once the merger closes to reach out to your new colleagues and see where those opportunities exist and where you can add value to the newly combined organization. Yeah, that's great. I, I know there can be um, a lot of anxiety of where things, what pieces are going to fall together and, and um, you know, what what the new organization will look like. Uh, but opportunities are great, so that's great counsel. So I'm gonna go a little bit different direction here. I wanna back up a little bit, Francis, um, and talk about your first board seat. How did they find you or how did you find them? And what experience or advice would you give to someone who's currently aspiring to be a board member and searching for a seat? Well, I, I'm very fortunate in that uh, I knew the founders of Allegiance Bank Shares, and they had approached me when they were actually founding the bank um, to join the board, the founding board. Um, at that time, it was not a, a good time for me to join the board, but they did come back later, uh, shortly before the board uh, or the bank was considering going public and about 18 months prior and um, I did choose to join the board at that particular point in time so I was fortunate in that I actually was not seeking a board position at that point in time because I was um, am employed and still am but I would tell others uh, that you know in make sure that you have looked at what your experiences are and look at your experiences in terms of how you can add value to a board, not necessarily as if you are seeking a new position in the field in which you have had experience, but what experience could you add in terms of being a board member? It's very important to remember that you, as a member of a board of directors, are going to be counseling a CEO, a CFO, and an entire management team. And you're going to be serving on a board very often with other former CEOs. So be truthful with yourself about what your experience is. Fortunately, in this current time, um, different types of experiences are very important. But again, 
look at your resume in terms of how you can add value to a board and uh, present yourself in that light and then network with other people. Certainly executive search firms can help in that regard, but I also think that networking within groups such as NACD, Texas Tri-Cities is extremely important. Yeah, I, even though uh, we still hear that about 85% of board seats are found through your network. So the, that networking component, yeah, really important. I've also heard others um, talk about how, to your point, you should really think about those one to two things that you that you really bring to the table from your you know past experience and what could really serve you well and serve the board well that you're looking at. So um, I, I've heard people really to focus on those one to two things. I would agree wholeheartedly with that, Jen. And uh, you just have to think very differently about your experience and how you can add value to the board and uh, be able to articulate that in a manner that will resonate uh, with your fellow board members. And do you think that changes, Francis, um, depending on the board that you may be considering? Or do, is that a constant thing? Or is it a, a slight tweak? I think it can be tweaked. Uh, you need to do your homework. You need to understand the company whose board you might be uh, being considered for because uh, that company may be undergoing certain types of changes. Certainly if it's in an industry in which you have experience, that will be extremely helpful. But even if it's in a different industry in which you have experience, uh, you can still add value, but you may need to tweak uh, how you can add value. And I would say doing your homework is one of the most important things before you would go in for any type of board interview. And that's the case before you go in for any type of interview. Yeah, very true, very true. So throughout your very successful career, You've worked on strategy development, investor and financial communications, crisis communications, stakeholder relations, ESG, uh, just a lot of experience. Um, how has that experience served you well in the boardroom? Well, you hit on the uh, optimal word, Jen, and that is experience. You know, having exposure to different situations and having the opportunity to see how different boards and management teams have responded to those situations is extremely important. You know, management teams are charged with dealing with these situations and boards um, are there to provide counsel and the collective experience of those boards is extremely important. Uh, when management comes to the board and asks for their advice, it is so helpful to be able to share what experience you have had in similar situations. And there are always different types of takeaways. There's never one perfect solution, but there may be different ways of approaching it. And being able to share what those outcomes are is always very helpful. So if you could go back in time to your first day in the boardroom, what would you tell from your perspective now? Um, what, what do you wish you could have told yourself in the, on that first day? Well, Jen, I will tell you, I'd probably tell myself the same thing I told myself then. And that is, uh, listen a lot. Learn everything you can from your fellow board members and from the management team. Learn from them, listen to their perspectives, understand where they are coming from, 
so you really understand who they are, how they approach different situations. Don't assume that even that from your own experiences that you may have a better way of approaching something. Take the time to really understand the business, the board, how they interact with management and always, always don't think you're the smartest person in the room because you're not. Very good, very good advice, thank you. Um, so you're, you're talking every day to, you talk to lots of different companies and different boards and um, you've got a lot of insight. I'm curious, what do you think are gonna be some of the, the top challenges that are facing the boardroom in the next, say, one to two years? Well, a word that we hear a great deal of right now, which is disruption. And disruption can mean a lot of different things for different businesses, but I would say it's largely going to be disruption through technology, through AI, through the metaverse, although please do not ask me what that's going to look <laughs> like because I don't understand it and don't purport to. So <laughs> I'm going to have to find a smarter person to tell you about that. But it's not unlike cryptocurrency and blockchain of a few years ago. And we've seen how that has, um, you know, the vagaries of that as well, uh, how it has changed our lives, but it's also imploded a bit, uh, probably to make a comeback as well. I think the changing nature of the workforce, which started during the pandemic, if you will, but I don't think that that is going to immediately return to pre-pandemic, uh, a pre-pandemic state. So I think we all need to be prepared for that. The change as a result of the changing needs of a younger workforce. And I would also say uh, the third thing that boards really need to stay in tune with are the continuing demands on companies, management teams and boards in terms of the societal positions and um, the societal positions that they want companies to weigh in on. Uh, I do think that S factor and ESG is going to be a continuing tension for companies to contend with. Yes, ESG. You almost can't go a day without hearing that, those, that acronym. Um, so I would be remiss if I didn't ask you, um, how has being a member of NACD and, um, and, and being on our chapter board as well, um, thank you for your service, um, how has that benefited you in your board service? Well, I can tell you in so many ways, but I would uh, put continuous learning at the top of the list. The insights that I gain from all of the incredible uh, people that I meet and network with, the other directors, many of whom have far greater experience than I do. I limit my service to one board because I am still fully employed. But just again, again, all of the perspectives and the experience and the insights that all of the people that I have met through conferences, uh, through the summit and through our board and the uh, Texas Tri-Cities meetings have just enriched my experience and my learning exponentially. And I would recommend to anyone, uh, whether you are a board member or not, or if you even are contemplating seeking uh, a board position to begin participating in NACD meetings because the information that is provided there and the people that you will meet just will enhance your value to any board 
that you ultimately will serve on. Thank you, Francis. That that is the goal, right? <laughs> That's what we're trying I, to. I think so. That's why we we all participate, and also why I feel that it's important to give back through board service to NACD. Well, we certainly appreciate it. Um, all right, I'm going to end on kind of a fun question. Um, tell us what the title of your autobiography would be. So my autobiography, I would hope that um, three words, problem solver, convener, and mentor. I and I'll it. leave that to your interpretation. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Francis. We really appreciate your time this morning and, and sharing with us um, these insights. And I know that our members will find it very valuable and uh, we will see you next time. Great. Thank you, Jen. Appreciate it. Have a great day.